On today's show, it is Thursday, September 9th. On today's show, put up the rundown, Clayton. Financial Armageddon is headed to the United States economy. If we default, Janet Yellen, you know, you don't want to hear those words from the Treasury Secretary, but that's what she said yesterday. Got a, got a big warning on that. Uh, then is Texas the craziest state in the country or Florida? You decide. Governor Greg Abbott of Texas says, don't worry about this whole abortion ban thing. And, and oh, by the way, masks and the vaccine. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Uh, and, oh, and by the way, don't and also don't worry about rapists, he says. Because he's got a plan to stop all rapists. Is it like Minority Report? He's going to figure he's gonna, like the pre <laughs> pre crime unit. <laughs> he's going to figure this out ahead of time. That and guy's wearing a hoodie. Yeah, he must be a rapist. I am so not a raper. And the Biden administration could make the highly effective Moderna vaccine available to the rest of the world. So why aren't they? Is it money? Let's get uncomfortable this morning. We've got a couple of stories to make you uncomfortable. Morning Invest starts right now. Kristen Miller says, uh, no, Florida definitely takes the cake. But everyone says, hey, Texas. Jacqueline says, Texas is worse. Jonathan Stewart says, Texas. People saying, stop it. Stop showing stop showing food because they're getting hungry. I'm sorry. We're showing, if you're tuning in late or you're, you're watching the, uh, a lot of people listen to us on uh, on the podcast. We have a podcast, audio only version of this show, by the way. Uh, and people, you know, so if you're listening to the audio only version in the pre show, we were showing cheesesteaks because I'm a huge cheesesteak fan. And you're just going to have to imagine what they looked like. Yeah. And David was trying to explain to us that. Like pineapple is okay to put on pizza, and I'm here to tell you it's not. No, but it's you, not okay. It's required. No, it's not pizza. In this house. Do they even eat that in Hawaii, or is that a canard? It's probably a canard. It probably originated somewhere else. We have Hawaiian viewers. Uh, if you're in Hawaii right now, let me know. Is this something you normally eat, or are you, are you sick and tired of being associated with this, this catastrophe of pizza? <laughs> Well, and, and, and usually a, uh, they're called a Hawaiian pizza when it has um, uh, ham and pineapple. Not not like I get. I get bacon because it's saltier. That mm. contrast of salt and sweet. Yeah, no. No. Sorry to disappoint you. Sorry uh, to disappoint Italy, you. In Italy, pineapple on your pizza is a mortal sin and a class A felony. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby says pineapple belongs on pizza. No. Yep. Jonathan Stewart says, pineapple on pizza, yuck. Exactly. No. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. (laughs) Not at this juncture. Not at this juncture. Not going to do it. All right, let's talk about our top story this morning. And Janet Yellen, Treasury Secretary, yesterday sent a letter to congressional leaders on uh, Wednesday saying the federal government could reach its borrowing limit sometime in October, although she didn't give an exact date for that. But basically... Uh, This, she says, is a financial Armageddon waiting to happen. She says, quote, I respectfully urge Congress to protect the full faith and credit of the United States by acting as soon as possible. Well, good. Um, And so no wonder stock market down, taking quite a tumble yesterday, uh, fourth straight day that it could be down as a result. Um, And so in short, as she describes it, uh, if Congress doesn't raise the limit on federal borrowing, the federal government will most likely run out of cash and extraordinary measures next month. In short, a default would be an economic cataclysm. Interest De- rates would spike, the stock market would crater, retirement accounts would take a beating, and the value of the U.S. dollar would erode, and the financial reputation of the world's only superpower would be tarnished. And Mark Zandi, chief economist at Moody's, says it would be financial Armageddon. Think about what they're just what they're saying. Doesn't raise the, the raise the limit on federal borrowing, right? More well, debt. by the way, by the way, you know, you think, oh, we're, we're borrowing so much money from China. We're not actually. It's like one or two percent. It's not actually that much we're borrowing from China. You know who we are borrowing from? Ourselves. We're borrowing from Wall Street. By the way, that's who we're borrowing money from. Is Wall Street? Wall Street banks. Overwhelmingly, we're borrowing from Wall Street. Isn't it amazing? I mean, we're getting zero interest loans from the federal government, and yet they're borrowing from us to stay solvent. So that, you know, what happens if suddenly your retirement account tanks? Uh, they can't pay these things back to Wall Street. 
the you know the Fed, the reserve currency of the world would be absolutely tarnished as a result. And maybe that's what needs to happen, sort of a cleansing here. It would be a, it would be a disaster. Jamie Jamie Dimon, JP Morgan Chase CEO said, "Not even think about it. Like don't even think about going down this path again." <laughs> During a hearing in May, he said this, and he said it again yesterday. He said, "You have to realize the damage this would cause America. It would literally cause uh, unbelievable perfor- proportions and damage America for the next hundred years if we defaulted. Uh, Janet Yellen says, until the last minute, we, we, she, we can't wait until the last minute. But of, of course you know we're going to wait to the last minute. Of course you know we will. This is going to come right down to the wire and we're going to have this squabble back and forth because here's the timeline, folks. You know, Nancy Pelosi right now, um, she said, she told Democrats on Wednesday that she won't include a debt limit increase in the reconciliation package, which is, uh, you know, being uh, up for a vote now or coming up for a vote. Maybe by the end of September, we'll get to your stimulus update on all of this and where we think stand between uh, between Joe Manchin and, and President Biden. That's coming up a little bit later. We'll talk about that. But Pelosi suggested that Democrats have several options on increasing the debt limit. But they're going to attach it to the continuing resolution according to sources close to this issue. Senate Minority Leader, though, Mitch McConnell, however, has said that he won't allow this to pass. He's not going to allow the debt limit to increase if Democrats go ahead with the reconciliation package. So it's a game of chicken once again. Who's going to win this time? Uh, I don't think... I think when you have people like Mark Zandi, Jamie Dimon, and you have all of these Wall Street guys saying, don't even think about it. Like, let's not even get close to October for this financial Armageddon because it's going to be irreparable damage to the economy. So I think there's going to be a bunch of phone calls from these big CEOs calling up Mitch McConnell. Uh, Hey, Mitch. Hey, Turtle Boy. Remember that? Those millions of dollars that I gave you? Yeah. Remember that. Remember that while you're sitting there trying to sit on uh, raising the uh, debt limit ceiling. So there's going to be a lot. Remember how we made sure your wife got her loan? Right. Yeah, you remember how Elaine Chow, your wife, so conveniently got PP, uh, PPP loans, hundreds of thousands of dollars? You remember that? Yeah, we'll make you We're remember We're calling that. in our favor. <laughs> that was a loud one. <laughs> almost had a piece of ice. Almost had a piece of ice go down the wrong tube. That would hurt. So there's going to be high-level drama uh, to come, as you can imagine. Um, I, you know, it's going to be interesting to see who who caves first. I mean, ha- here's the thing: we're already seeing market chaos. We're already seeing troubling signs on the jobs front in the labor market. So the jobs numbers, of course, we're going to have the, that jobs data out today. This is why Wall Street is uh, heading for a fourth day of lows. Um, we saw the ECB, the European Central Bank, this morning with some breaking news on that front. They are going to ease their stimulus. They're going to start to roll back their stimulus buying, their bond purchasing in in the the European Union. Uh, The Federal Reserve likely going to do the same thing in the United States. Even as we're continuing to see really troubling signs now in the economy. I mean, never mind the fact that we have all these unemployment benefits that have run out. And we have an eviction moratorium that's drying up. So where are people going to go? What's going to happen now if literally Wall Street starts to collapse and everyone's retirement plans? That's the thing. Americans' retirement plans, people don't think in terms of like buying performing assets. So most Americans just think, oh, I'm going to get a 401k, which is a piece of garbage. Or pensions. or Yeah, well, pensions are gone, right? I mean, who has a pension anymore if you're lucky? And even if you think you have it, do you really? When you see all these pension plans that have gone bankrupt. So all of these people who have their hopes and dreams tied to some crappy retirement plan, tied to Wall Street, and then that collapses because we can't get our financial house in order in the United States. It's sure we can continue to print money so we can carry out wars on a regular basis, but uh, we can't uh, have a balanced budget like we had in the 90s under Clinton with a Republican Congress, by the way. (laughs) Imagine they got that done. (laughs) It feels like there's just like a bunch of writers in the background somewhere writing this drama and and they keep like pitting sides against it's like keeping us, you know, divided so that we're it's like we're watching a a, a TV show. 
like a drama series. So it's like you couldn't write this stuff. Yeah. No, I think you could write it, but it would be rejected or you wouldn't get a book deal. Right. Because wait a minute, you're you're <laughs> saying So wait, you did this David, like David, here's your book, right? Here here's the book that you just submitted to us, David, and uh I I noticed that this is the the sequel to your previous book. And in your previous book there there was squabbling with the debt limit and it came down to the wire and someone in Congress finally balked at it. And in this book, you're doing the same thing, but it's a year later in a different book. Like I've seen this story before and it's not, I'm not going to buy this book. <laughs> and that's what we're going. I mean, we go through this crap every time we had, we had this issue happen right before Christmas. Here we are again on this budget resolution to keep the government running. Like, so like, what if the government shuts down? But in the first book, the people benefited, right? Oh, always. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> People are always doing great. Yeah. I mean, think about this, right? If we have soaring treasury rates, okay, it would set off a chain reaction in the financial markets if they don't get their act together. Um, again, if you think of treasuries as sort of like a risk-free asset, treasuries are the things that like grandma would invest in, right? Because she doesn't like risk. Well, now imagine like suddenly they're not backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government anymore. Uh, it's the benchmark for which everything around the world is 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 based. Everything, right? The reserve currency of the world, U.S. Treasuries. Cynthia became a channel member. Thank you, Cynthia. Everything from stocks, bonds, to securities, they all focus on what that 10-year treasury is doing. You know, if, if you don't understand how all this stuff works... The reason, whenever time you flip on financial news channels or, and you hear them talking about the 10-year treasury, it's because that's the standard. A spike in treasury rates w would cause booming stock markets to become unglued, and it, there would just be absolute... First of all, and maybe this is what we need. I'm, you know, I don't know. I think it would be a disaster, but maybe all these overvalued companies that aren't really worth what, what these stock prices reflect would come crashing back down to a reasonable standard. Like the air I mean, would don't just you be think, left out of the market. Don't you think at some point, like in order to right the ship, something's going to have to collapse. It's going to absolutely have to. Like, I don't know how, like how we fix it otherwise, because it's, it's, it's to a point where everything is so bad on the, the financial end that they're, they're continually propping things up. I think that the success of the market is not based on the economy anymore. It's based on how much money the Fed can pump into it. Like it used to be stocks were, were uh, regulated by, um, you know, you'd see that like if, if there was a, a lot of movement in the middle class, like we were out spending mm -hmm. money. That's when stocks were up. But now it's just like that we're not out spending money. The middle cl class doesn't have any money and they're still seeing record profits and stuff. Something isn't right. It's got to crash. No, as we talked about here on the show about six months ago, I showed you a chart on the corporate debt. I don't know if you remember that chart. It was like almost a year ago now. And I showed you what the amount of debt these corporations are sitting on. They're sitting on debt and they're not investing in their country, their company, right? So they're not investing in research and development or hiring. And what they're doing is they're paying enormous CEO salaries and they're buying their shares back and they're sitting on massive debt. So what are these companies worth? Like most of them are completely overvalued. Well, and when you say they're sitting on debt, we continue we continue to send them subsidies and bail them out whenever it, it right. gets too bad. So it's like what like what do they care? You guys, we don't care. Let's just run up debt, and then the the government's going to bail us out. So mm -hmm. here's your here's your thirty million. Go get a plane, man. Mark Zandi, Moody's Analytics says stock prices would crater. We'd all be less wealthy instantaneously. Not only would millions of Americans lose money in the stock market, but it will also suddenly become more expensive for families and companies to borrow money. So forget about that piece. Like just thinking about the stock market piece, do, you know, don't forget that now you want to go borrow money. You want to get a loan to buy a house or a car. Good luck. You, I mean, you really, it's, you know how hard it is right now to get a loan for yeah, people imagine to get a loan? It more, imagine it worse or harder. They're like, you know, hey, you know, during the 2008, we're going to give the banks all this money so that they can start loaning it to you guys. And instead of loaning it to us and, and making it go out into the middle class, which is where all the money needs to go. All of this talk about stimulus and, and, and getting money out and, and, and the UBI and all that stuff, that is to get the economy going and giving it to the middle class. 
But no, they keep giving it to the banks and then they put it out in bonuses and we don't see any of it. We have to fight to get loans. Um, you know, we have to fight the credit system. You know, I just had to fight yeah. the credit system recently where I, I'm a, like a 750 beacon score. And because one credit card had an annual fee that I had canceled and they never said anything, they dinged my credit, took me down to a six. 630 something and it affected my my interest rate on my car from like 2.99 percent to 12 percent interest jeez. jeez louise and there's and, and you can't talk to them anymore and be like hey yeah I, you should see my credit was perfect before it's just this one thing and i'm getting it off my thing they're like yeah we don't care we, we they only go by the number they don't even you can't even have a conversation with them so we have to fight for to get our money back yeah, and that's how the United States operates. It's a debt economy. And so that's how we operate. You know, you want to go get a home loan, uh, you need to have good credit. I mean, that's the bottom line. Or if you don't have good credit, you're going to pay $100,000 more for your loan over the life of the loan because your credit is a little bit dinged. Well, and, Imagine, and when you say $100,000, like $100,000 more for your loan if you want to go get a home. And when you say good credit, I have impeccable credit. I pay all my cards off at the end of every single month, but they don't care. They don't look at it. They go by the number. Mm -hmm. So if you if you're looking to get something like when I went to get the car, I noticed all of a sudden I started getting these things: hard inquiry, hard inquiry, hard inquiry, and and those like even getting your credit checked takes your credit score down. It's stupid. They just make all these barriers. It's like with the stimulus, they they have to put all these barriers in place for yeah. us to get any money. Yeah, and well, not for Wall Street. You know, Wall Street can get money <laughs> lickety split, right? And the banks Instant are borrowing at zero percent. Zero percent interest they can borrow. You know, bam, they can get money overnight. You know, so if the debt ceiling is not lifted, then the federal government will technically default, okay, on some of its uh, obligations. It would be then forced to basically prioritize who it pays and who doesn't. So who do you think is going to get paid back first? Wall Street. That's who will get paid back first. And other countries, right? They'll probably pay China back first. Ultimately, someone is going to lose out here, whether it's federal employees, veterans, Social Security recipients. I got an idea. Here's what's going to happen. They're going to pay China back first before they will make sure that Social Security is solvent. I mean, we're talking about Social Security. We're talking about Medicaid. We're talking about all of the things that we've come to rely on for some little basic social safety net, as, as crappy as it is, drying up. Hey, but we continue to... Um, we continue to spend money on wars, so I guess we can continue to funnel that. By the way, it's so funny, actually. As part of this negotiation over the next few weeks on 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 on, uh, on the debt limit, you know, we've got the reconciliation bill, we've got the debt limit uh, issue, we also have uh, we have an abortion issue that we're dealing with, obviously in Texas. But among the other issues is the Defense Authorization Act. How quickly do you think they'll pass that? How quickly do you think that they'll, by the way, there's a, a, they're passing an additional $24 billion as part of the Congressional uh, Authorization for D a Defense Act. How quickly do you think they will funnel money into the war zone? It's probably already that. there. They're probably <laughs> like, like just go ahead and take the money and we'll pass the bill later. I know there are some progressives who are saying we're not going to, we're not supporting this. No way. We'll see. Well, like Kenneth, I continue, like I say over and over and over again, if the squad and Bernie would team up, they could, they could control all these bills, every single one of them. Yeah. yeah, could, but they won't. Kenneth Watterson in our chat left me a super chat says, I left you three questions in the chats. I don't know where that is, Kenneth. Yeah, I I, I responded and asked him to super chat because there's no way we can go back and filter through all the comments we get to find questions. We yeah. try to answer as many as we can, but. Oh, I see one here, Kenneth, but you know I'm in the middle of another story here. So, but anyway, he asks, "What's the best digital wallet for cryptocurrency to be stored on?" Well, I personally use a Ledger, is a is a hardware wallet. Hardware. You can have the Tracer and the Ledger. Those are two that are hardware. My wife got that for me for Father's Day, so I've got the Ledger, hardware wallet. Uh, but uh, you know, you know, you've got other Coinbase has spent a ton of money as far as like an online exchange. They've spent a ton of money on security. So as like an online exchange, that's one if you're going to store it online and trade. But I personally think cold storage is the best move. All right, we've got more news to get to. I want to get to your stimulus in a moment, and it's Biden v. Manchin in a big battle here. We'll tell you what the White House is saying and where Joe Manchin is on the stimulus update, the $3.5 trillion package. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Netgear. And, uh, you know, the makers of the fantastic Orbi, it's a masterpiece of connectivity. 
Is your Wi-Fi struggling to keep up with your streaming, your work, your video calling, and more? No, well, it's not, Clayton, because I use the Orbi. Oh, yeah. So David upgraded to the Orbi about four months ago, right? Yeah. So now you don't have those problems anymore. No, not at all. and it's amazing. It, it supports 2.4 or 2.5 megs of internet. So I've got uh, two gigs going into it, which means I got two gigs going out into my house so I can run like tons of devices. And two I go gigs? out to the, yeah, Holy I go out smokes. to the edge of my yard uh, and I still have service out there. Like it's, Jeez. I have two of them. I have a, one and then a satellite and my whole house is like perfectly covered. Well, it's time to treat your home like David's home to the world's superior Wi-Fi system with Orbi Wi-Fi 6 by Netgear. No more buffering, no more dead zones, no more dropped Wi-Fi connections. Orbi Wi-Fi 6 by Netgear is perfectly engineered to ensure a faster, superior Wi-Fi connection across even the most demanding and sophisticated smart homes of any size. Upgrade to the award-winning Orbi Wi-Fi 6 when you get untapped, crisp 8K video streaming, get crystal clear audio with faster speeds across your devices, all with zero interruptions. And by the way, you want to get 10% off today? So upgrade to Orbi 6 to Wi-Fi 6 today and get 10% off. All you need to do is go to netgear.com slash best Wi-Fi. It's right there on your screen. Netgear.com slash best Wi-Fi. Use the promo code MORNING10. That's how you get 10% off. You have to use that code MORNING10 create that awesome mesh network for your house one thing that's that i like especially about it is that the satellite where i have like it's not plugged into ethernet down in the uh living room yeah i have two ethernet devices plugged directly into it and am getting really good speeds meaning i i it's I, it's like i extended my uh, ability oh, to use yeah, ethernet yeah. ports even though it's not it's it's yeah. wi-fi but you're plugged into that wi-fi mesh network hub and it's yeah. actually almost as fast as actual i'm getting three to four hundred up out of a one gig connection wow (laughs) yeah through a satellite nice that's awesome yeah 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 jonathan stewart says the orby sounds really good if i can afford it i used to have the older netgear netgear is the best yeah i love netgear sweet 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 so yeah if you don't waste your money on some of those crappy things you see at like best buy like with all like the like look like a spider with all the antennas everywhere those things do not work don't do it don't do it trust me take it from david and i (laughs) they're a waste of money all right we got more news to get to in fact let's get to this story uh the stimulus so president biden is uh really battling right now uh with with Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin could really upend his presidency. Maybe that's what he wants. I don't know. Uh, But the bipartisan infrastructure bill, Pelosi now has agreed to hold a floor vote on this. So she will, in fact, hold a floor vote on the bipartisan $1 trillion infrastructure bill by September 27th. Okay, so that's the first part. This will be happening while Democrats are still trying to fight. They're fighting with each other over the reconciliation bill. I know it gets complicated here, guys. Remember that the f- first infrastructure bill was the roads and bridges bill. That was the $1 trillion deal, right? This other one is the $3.5 trillion human infrastructure package, right? Which is Medicare, Medicaid, healthcare spending, all of that, and raising taxes. It has dental. It has vision that, pres- uh, that Bernie Sanders wants in there. Well, Pelosi and House Democratic leaders right now are pushing to get the reconciliation package through the budget committee by that date, September 27th. But we're not sure at this point that that's even doable. They don't even get back from break until the 20th. I mean, they're back, like, I mean, really? <laughs> back on the 20th? Yeah, I love how it, most of America funny. goes back after Labor Day, but they're, they're, they're back after the 20th. And they've been off all August, by the way. Well, and remember, they were like, there was such a crisis that they called them all back and mm-hmm. they did nothing and then left again. Yeah. <laughs> Like we're back, we're ready to do something here. But Nancy's uh, like, we're calling them all back. You guys get back in here. We're gonna fix this, and then they get in there. Oh, we're not fixing it. Sorry. Yeah, psych. We're not. We're not doing this. So we'll never underestimate Nancy Pelosi's power on this stuff. You know, her ability to deliver on this stuff. She's done it before. So don't underestimate this woman. I'm telling you, love her, hate her, whatever you do, I don't care. But don't underestimate this woman. But also don't don't forget we won't know what's in it until it passes. Like she said, we got to pass the health care bill until we so we can figure out what's in it. <laughs> I saw Linda in the chat a few minutes ago, Linda Evans saying 
you know, hey, Clayton, you know, she she has universal basic in care, uh, universal basic income hidden in this bill. Um, I don't know how you know that, Linda. I mean, I with all due respect, there's no we've not seen any draft of this thing yet at all. And they yeah, just and they're not going to they're not no. going to hide that. <laughs> no. And th- th- that if that's in there, they're going to let us know about it, by the way. Yeah. Republicans uh, would be. Yeah, they'd be up, up in arms about it. Also, I should mention that they just started marking up the bill like yes, uh, yesterday or today. I think they start marking up the bill today. So we don't even have like they haven't even gone back and forth deciding what's in, what's out yet. So, um, again, Linda, I love you with all due respect, but I, I don't think that's in there. <laughs> I'm like, if it is, I'd love to know where you, you heard this from. Is it some YouTuber? Because it's not true. Kind of um, on. Uh, in the chat is saying, I am a member Clayton and I did listen to what you were saying about the financial Armageddon. What I'm curious about is that, is that going to affect people's disability payments? I know pensions are gone. Well, yeah. I mean, social security disability. I mean, if social security is gone and we default, where do we get the money to pay for social security? There's no money, right? If the social security trust fund is, I'm telling you what they will raid first, what they always raid first it's the stuff that will benefit you. So yes, exactly. Social Security disability benefits, yes, absolutely, would be rated first. Veterans benefits, yes, they're going to pay back Wall Street first, like they always do. So back to the stimulus side, Pelosi you know, has a t- tough challenge right now, uh, and for the rest of her leadership team to try to get this done. Progressives could face a key question here: Do they vote for the bipartisan infrastructure bill? If the reconciliation package isn't ready yet, you know, we've heard from AOC and others have said, like, we're not going to vote for that one over there until this one's uh, like until we know we're officially getting to vote on this one, because we've had the rug pulled out from under us before where you guys have passed these legislations for these for Wall Street. And then you promise us the next one's going to help the people. And then it never comes. That's what I would do is I would be like, okay, so if that's how it's going to be, you want this bill, then let's move the one for the people to the front because they're hurting right now. These businesses are not Uh, infrastructure. If it's as bad as it is, it can wait another since it's a 10 year plan. Anyway, it can wait a little bit. Let's get the people help. Uh, And so if that people bills not uh, proposed first, I'm not voting on anything. That's what I would do. Yeah, I I I mean, look what mansion Manchin's not afraid to to put himself out there and and do this. So why is the squad always scared? Donald Ford in our chat says, uh, honest question, why do you think the government would ever be able to properly enact UBI? I think it would all go to Wall Street and big banks. Well, I, look, I think it's enormously popular, you know, and I think the, the sad thing is that we are ruled by the minority in this country, right? You can lose the, you can literally lose, uh, not get 3 million votes, Donald Trump, and still become a president of the United States. Like lose the popular vote, right? 3, 3 million votes to Hillary Clinton, you still become president. Like the voice of the minority in this country, like overwhelmingly, this country wants universal basic income. Overwhelmingly, this country wants vaccines. Overwhelmingly, we want safety at our schools for our children. Like overwhelmingly, and yet the minority, and overwhelmingly, we want women's rights in this country, right? Overwhelmingly, we want it to be easier to vote in this country, not harder. And who ends up winning? These like crackpot legislators that end up getting inst- installed in, into these into these state governments by Wall Street. So the minority runs the show, even despite the fact that the majority wants wants major change in this country. Well, and, and out of all the programs that we have, Social Security and Medicare and stuff, that's actually a pretty efficient system. I mean, they continue to steal from it uh, and and short people, but it's a pretty efficient system for getting money out to people. Yeah, it is. And guess what? It's wildly popular. You know, try to, what is it called? The third rail of politics. Like, you know, you do not touch Social Security. Like, if you want to lose an election, if you're a Republican, you mention that you're going to slash Social Security. And they've learned their lesson. They don't talk about it now. They just do it surreptitiously. Right? They do it quietly. Till it goes bankrupt. They don't actually mention it when they're campaigning anymore. They say that they're going to protect Social Security. But then when they get elected, they go in there and they try to gut it. That's what they do. So progressives, you know, you've got progressives on all of this. They've sought to like link these two bills in order to make sure that like Democratic moderates like Manchin don't get their favorite uh, infrastructure bill approved and then turn right around and vote against this thing. Right. Well, you know, I just vote, want to turn point around out really quick. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to point out really quick. Uh, Biden has been trying to cut Social Security for 40 years. Oh, yeah, he has. 
well, cut it, I should say, extend, cut it and also increase the uh, retirement age. Yeah. Yeah. So two pronged. But now he's now he's not in favor of gutting it, though. Right. Now, now right. that he's president or so right. he says. Right. But Manchin, by the way, you know, he that's why progressives are saying we want to link these two because we don't want suddenly them to turn around and vote against the reconciliation package. They have to do it in timing. And so the timing here is going to be very dicey for progressives and all of this right now. Um, and also, we, we did hear from uh, Senator Schumer uh, rejecting Joe Manchin's call for a pause on the Biden plan. Uh, he rejected a call for Democrats to hit a pause on President Biden's spending plan, saying that we're sticking to this ambitious timeline. We're going full speed ahead, he said. We want to keep going forward. We think getting this is getting done is important. And of course, that's Joe Manchin wrote in that opinion piece the other day that he thinks we need to take a pause right now. We're spending too much money and we can't afford to do that. Okay. But it's okay for us to spend trillions of dollars on war. But when it comes to helping the American people, we need to pause. And by the way, I'm painting a picture for you with all of this, what's going on right now in the economy and the troubling signs that we're seeing in the economy and this surge in this in coronavirus and Delta virus cases right now. It's bad. It's bad. Um, and you have teachers dying in schools because, you know, school board says, you know, you don't have to wear masks. So the kid, you know, the kids don't wear masks and they asymptomatic bringing COVID in the schools. Two teachers have now died in Texas. So we're not out of the woods on this at all. 300% increase in COVID cases this week at the same time last year, it was 300% less last year in 2020. Now 2021, and it's this bad. So we are not out of the woods yet, Joe Manchin. I got news for you. So we'll see. Democrats are also expected to take up the the you know this this one trillion dollar bill by September 27th. That's what Nancy Pelosi wants to do. They've got a lot of balls in the air right now, juggling to try to get this thing through. Question I've got for you in the chat. Let me know. Is do you think they're going to get this done in time? Do you think you'll you'll you know get that first package uh, voted on by the 27th? And then do you think we'll also get the, the $3.5 trillion package signed for very shortly thereafter? Let me know in the chat what you think is going to happen. Coming up on the show, we've got news on the Moderna vaccine. Now we're going to look at Texas. What the heck is happening down there in Texas? But first, let's talk about what the IRS is doing. So I got a question for you. Would you want every transaction that you make to be instantly reported to the IRS. No. I'm talking. <laughs> uh, hold on. Maybe you'll be encouraged by oh, this. Okay. okay. Uh, so every in, every transaction you make reported to the IRS. So I'm talking about no. a restaurant, a restaurant meal, a restaurant meal. <laughs> your your uh, when you go get your pineapple my, pizza, my three margarita lunch, your three margarita lunch. When you go get your Taco Bell, when you make a PayPal transaction, when you go to the nail salon. And get your nails did. Would you mind that all of that gets reported to the IRS? I mean, it already does, just not instantly. Mm. Uh, in I mean, a way, because at the end, of, like if you'd buy a bunch of stuff through PayPal or whatever, like you get your little what is it, uh, K form or whatever, whatever the form mm -hmm. is, they get you at the end of the year, or whatever for all the purchases you make. That goes. The IRS has all that stuff too, right? They, they, I mean, they don't know all of your transactions. They don't know all of your transactions. I mean, well, not transactions, but if you use like, like if you, if you're like making money through a certain thing, like if I'm using FreshBooks, FreshBooks has to report it. So then they send me a 1099 or whatever the heck it is they send at the end of the year. They also send that to the IRS when they file their taxes. Correct. So it's not well, like your, your overall profits. Like they're not sending every yeah. transaction. Gotcha. So, so they're right. wanting to track individual transactions. Exactly. So imagine living in a world where all of your non-cash transactions, a restaurant meal, a Venmo transfer, uh, you know, maybe you bought some Bitcoin the past week during these dips. All of it was automatically reported to the IRS, who's audit hungry already, we know. And they've hired yeah. thousands of additional people at the IRS, right? I mean, I trust the government, so yeah, I, I guess I'd be all right with that. I, it's not like they're going to do anything nefarious with that information, right? Well, 
President Biden, along with Elizabeth Warren and G- Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, are all pushing for this very um, intrusive, I'll call it financial surveillance system, uh, in the name of closing this tax gap. I mean, what they're oh, pointing... So they're g- yeah. Going to the, after the wealthy, then, is what you're saying. No, 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 no. Now, you would think that that's what they would be going after, right? That they would be going after the wealthy, because God knows... You know, I mean, how many how many uh, billionaires aren't paying their fair share in taxes, right? I mean, we already know that the top one percent are evading one hundred sixty three billion dollars a year in taxes. But you know, Republicans and Democrats have voted against this, basically. But right now, the White House is investing or has proposed investing eighty billion dollars in a new tax collection agency over the ten years to hire more enforcement staff, overhaul its technology and usher in new information reporting requirements that would give the government greater insight into tax evasion schemes. We knew this was coming. They've already moved more digitally anyway. So so rather than going after the billionaires who actually do take advantage of the tax system, they're going to put things in place to make it so that not only will they know every transaction, because then if they know every transaction, they are going to know our income, so if you start to have any kind of savings, they're going to be like, we need to go after this person. We cannot have people in America saving money. Like they already don't like when we save money. They don't like us to have any money. So now they're going to know everything that we're buying, everything that we're selling amongst each other. And this could go over to like, I mean, crypto and stuff too. Like how? Yeah, they would know it all. Come on, man. Hey, yeah, you that's... want me to get on board with this, Joe? I'm sorry, but this is creepy. No. I mean, think about this uh, in, you know, Republicans and lobby business lobbyists um, who argue the IRS can't be trusted with more power. Uh, say that these proposals are an invasion of privacy. Democrats are counting on raising money by collecting more unpaid taxes to help pay for the three point five trillion dollar spending package. Right. So they're, they're kind of laying they're, they're trying to couch this as we're going to go after wealthy people. But wealthy people don't make I, I, I hate to say this, but. I don't want to hate to say this. Wealthy people don't. Wealthy people aren't doing those sort of day to day transactions like that. Right. Um, it's, it's funny. People end up buying and gifting things to wealthy people all day long. It's it's going to hurt the little person. It, that's it's going to hurt us, frankly. It always does. That's all this is about. This is about they're like, you know what? Do you know how much money we're missing from the little guy? Like that, like there's no push to get the billionaires. Like nothing will fundamentally change. Like, like Biden said, they're not going to fundamentally change how these guys have all these loopholes and and the the people that are coming to their parties and giving them, you know, super PAC money and all this other stuff. No, they're going to be like, we could nickel and dime the American people and probably get enough to pay for our, at least our furniture budgets. So let's do that. But do you think for a second, I mean, that they're going to start really looking at the wealthy people? No. No. Um, you know, you have the Treasury Department making the case that narrowing the tax gap is part of Biden's administration's ambition to create a more equitable economy, as audits and enforcement actions will be aimed at the rich. Sure, sure, sure. Because that never, you know, that, that always works. And what we know disproportionately is that audits actually Look at uh, middle class and low income Americans disproportionately. And also in this country, oddly, oddly, people of color. Why? So you're concerned with somehow someone misplaced the $10 from this column and did it wrong. $10. Let's, let's, Let's audit that person. Instead of the billions that they're not paying on Wall Street. Now, let's go after the person that misappropriated $10 and got it wrong for failed to report this $10 they got from a babysitting job. And imagine what it costs for them to every audit that they do of every little person, the money that we spend to audit that person that tried to, you know, that missed 10 bucks. And here's now it'll be super easy, right? Because now what they'll do is they'll get, you know, they'll get access to credit card data. They'll get access to PayPal data. They'll make it a law. Okay, so that every PayPal transaction, every uh, Venmo transaction, et cetera, uh, will be cataloged by the IRS. They'll know exactly what you're spending money on. They'll be they'll know exactly where you're going. It, it, you know, and you don't think that they'll use this for nefarious reasons. I mean, really? Come on, man. I know you will. 
I know you will use it for nefarious reasons because I don't trust the government. Look at the look at the NSA. I mean, look what Edward Snowden told us about. And now he's a criminal. He tells us that our government is snooping on our phone conversations. Innocent Americans. Like you, you believe that the IRS will use this use this data for good. And by the way, the government gets hacked on a regular basis. So even the government having access to this data, what about what about hackers get access to this data? They can know all of the you know what we're buying when I go to the pharmacy. They can know everything that I'm buying, every transaction that I make. They can know that I'm stocking up on pineapple for my pizza, and people can yes. mock me for putting pineapple on a pizza. You know? Nothing makes sense. Exactly, Judge. Pineapple on pizza? Nothing makes sense. Exactly. I don't wear a toupee. <laughs> so there, there's your financial control coming to the United States. Biden's total financial control couched as a, uh, you know, as a way of going after rich people. Imagine living in a world where everything is watched write to your government call your representatives tell them to vote against this tell them to make sure that this is not a, and by the way they'll shoehorn this in some sort of uh in, in some sort of reconciliation package like they'll sneak this 80 billion dollars in there and no one will have no recourse it'll just be snuck in there we have nothing to do about it there's nothing we can do it'll just be passed and President Biden will sign it. Awful. But still hasn't gotten out the additional 600 bucks he owes us. Right. But, you know, Linda in the chat brought up a good point a few minutes ago. Said, uh, said you know, it's interesting how apparently they don't know what we spend our money on. Yet when they sent out the stimulus bills, stimulus, stimulus checks, boy, they happen to know that we spent a lot of it at the stores and what we were spending it on to, to label it a success. Yeah, they knew so much. Like, look, look, so so you think that the IRS isn't going to use that for nefarious things, but look, the first stimulus, they used that to to track how many people were saving. And so now every time they propose stimulus again, there's all of these regulations and stipulations and stuff because they don't want you doing that. They mm -hmm. don't want you to have any money to save. So you think they're not going to use that kind of that kind of information at the IRS to be like, well, this person's doing this. We need to, you know, d d do this or whatever. Like they use that information against us already once and they don't even they're not even doing it at the IRS level yet. Right. Yeah. Although Rumble Gold in our chat says, uh, so question, if they monitor everything I spend on, well, maybe they'll give me more to enable me to keep up. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like, hey, Rumpel is, uh, he's buying a lot of video games lately. So The IRS, to, a financial force for good. We need to make sure that Rumpel can continue to buy uh, PlayStation 5 games. And he's been buying a lot of pineapple for his pizza lately. She, yeah. Oh, Rumpel, yeah, sorry. A, Rumpel yeah, sounds like a, a guy, that's why, I think, you know. No, I thought that for the longest time, too, because of Rumpelstiltskin. Lioness says, I need a shirt that says nothing makes sense. I do. <laughs> that would be great. I don't know if Judge would allow me to do it. Nothing makes sense. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Hey, hey Grim, make a note of that. Grim, make a note on that yeah, t-shirt. Nothing makes sense. We need a clever, nice t-shirt. Um, I want to tell you about our friends at Grammarly. We've got more news to get to here. We're going to talk about the Moderna vaccine here in a minute and what's going on in Texas. We'll blow your mind. Wait until you see this video out of Texas. We'll show you that in a minute. But first, our friends at Grammarly, I got to say, when it comes to saving time and working more efficiently, there's very few things that I use that save me as much time as Grammarly does. I love Grammarly. It really helps me become a better writer. It improves our newsletter every day. It makes sure that we have proper clarity and uh, vocabulary in our newsletter. Um, you can tie it. Grammarly works right inside of your browser. So you can install it, run it right inside of Chrome. You can put it inside of Safari, whatever browser you're using. You know, you can put it right inside of Gmail. So as you're typing your email out in Gmail, right there to, to make sure you're not making stupid spelling mistakes. And your it, it, yeah, it works in Google Docs books. too. Oh, yeah, yeah. They've got Google Docs now, too. And so that's how Natalie and I collaborate on the newsletter in the morning through our Google Docs. And it saves us so much time. It saves us so much time. 
So, I mean, we use it every day in our daily newsletter. Uh, by the way, you should subscribe to our daily morning newsletter. Morninginvest.com is how you subscribe. But anyway, uh, with the free version of Grammarly, it's free. Just try it. You're safe from embarrassing spelling mistakes, grammar, and punctuation mistakes. Why wouldn't you download it? It is free. It's yeah, free. don't be the person that loses respect every time you say there, there, or there. Exactly. Or you use affect instead of effect, right? Yeah. You know how many you know how many dates people have lost due to the way they spelt there? Exactly. Don't fall for bad grammar. Grammar premium, by the way, they have advanced time saving features, help you write more clearly and efficiently, streamline your workload with seamless integration in a Microsoft Office, your internet browser, your phone. I use it on my phone. And they actually have a Grammarly keyboard for the iPhone. You can close all your thesaurus tabs, or as David says, thesaurus. And you can save the research with time with vocabulary suggestions for more compelling word choices. Get straight to the point with clarity suggestions that eliminate unnecessary or redundant or redundant or redundant or redundant words and phrases. Hit send with confidence and get your point across more effectively with Grammarly Premium. Get 20% off Grammarly Premium by signing up at Grammarly.com slash invest. It's right there on your screen. That's 20% off at G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash invest. Our thanks for supporting Morning Invest. Have you ever read a thesaurus? I have read a thesaurus. Have you ever read one on weed? (laughs) No, I have not. (laughs) I've never done weed. I've never done... uh, I've never done the pot. I've never done the pot. I've literally never... uh, I've never done a drug in my life. Isn't that crazy? Wow. But maybe I'll start. You don't do caffeine? Uh, I mean, I, I, I've never done a drug other than, uh, like heroin. Um, oh, oh, gotcha. Gotcha. I, I've never done yep. any of the hard stuff like caffeine. Yeah. I don't do <laughs> or the sugar. hard stuff or sugar. Yeah. Joe says weed is tight. What was that? Huey Lewis. I want a new drug. One that won't make me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Jason Frank says, I wish I could so badly tell you what happened to me with bank of America and chase then tell the listeners. Not sure what even happened was even legal. Linda says, man, you've been so sheltered, Clayton. I know. I know. I just never. You know what it was? I'll tell you the truth about. Uh, I'll tell you the truth about drugs. So I grew up. My uh, my uncle. Uh, when he went off to Phillips Exeter Academy, he was a brilliant, brilliant guy. He went off to Phillips Exeter Academy, uh, like on a full scholarship, I guess. And uh, it was the 60s, I guess. And he, you know, and he started doing drugs there. And he was brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And he he started doing like LSD and other things, I guess. I didn't know what drugs he did. So for me, it just meant any drug, you know, and it triggered schizophrenia in him. Um, and for a lot of people, it can be latent and never come out. But because of drugs, it like it triggered it. And according to some neurosurgeon uh, that I was close with, he said, yeah, it's, it's very possible. But um, that it like that's exactly what triggered it as a result of that. And then he ended up like living with my grandmother for the rest of his life. And he, you know, he was really just just his whole life went down the tubes as a result of uh, having to deal with that. And he, wow. he lived with my grandmother and never got a job. And it just was a really, really sad, sad um, existence for him. So I was always fearful that, oh, my God, if I ever did that, it would trigger something like that in me. Maybe it's genetic, to which a neurosurgeon said, no, it's not. And it wouldn't. But, hey, then I missed the point of doing drugs. You know, I was like, then I was in my like late 20s. And I'm like, well, that ship has sailed. I don't really need to... <laughs> I mean, wind that clock back to college again, you know? So yeah, not anyway. me. I I done almost all of them. Oh, good. Yeah, that explains. I've, it. Yeah, that's like at least explains the beard. Yeah, and the pineapple on the pizza. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's nothing like smoking and then going and eating a an entire Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> exactly. Well, speaking of drugs, <laughs> let's talk about Moderna, shall we? So. Uh, you know, right now we've got this vaccine that's been highly effective. Uh, the Moderna vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, they've been highly effective if, if weak, weaker than maybe they would have otherwise in order to avoid uh, side effects. That's why they said they've made them weaker, at least what the, the CEO of Pfizer has said, that it's been weaker so they could avoid big side effects. So that, that means, I guess, we have to take these things on a regular basis. I don't know. Anyway, this is the first batch. It was an emergency protocol, but the Moderna vaccine has been highly successful. So we have the opportunity in the United States maybe to share it with the rest of the world. 
right? We know that those who are vaccinated are far less likely to wind up in an ICU bed and die. Yes, you might get COVID, but the whole point is you're not going to die. That's the whole goal of this thing. Unless you're immunocompromised, you're 85 years old, you've got, you know, you've had some other major health issues before, right? So couldn't we share this with the rest of the world? Well, we can. But, and as President Biden could, with the, the stroke of a pen, actually do this. Well, as the Daily Poster reports, a new report suggests the United States may have unfettered rights to the information the countries desperately need to scale up the COVID-19 vaccine production to help the rest of the world. Which is why they wanted the patent so quickly. Right. But the Biden administration may possess unilateral rights to the biochemical makeup and manufacturing process of the Moderna vaccine. In a 2020 contract with Moderna, which is a division of the Department of Health and Human Services, they agreed to bankroll much of the vaccine development in exchange for access to all documentation and data generated under this contract. And that documentation, as the report says, likely includes the vaccine recipe and manufacturing process. Now, we've heard that we can't share this with the rest of the world because it's proprietary, right? They've got a patent on it we, and they need to make their money. Well, and, and, they're, and they were saying they don't want China to come up with a cheaper version that, you know, right? by, by making, you know, th- and, and then taking that technology and expanding it to, to cure other things that the United States wouldn't be able to cure first. Dis- disseminating that data would allow countries with fewer or less effective vaccines available to begin the process of manufacturing the Moderna jab. An important step in getting world, the worldwide pandemic under control. You know, the thing is, like, the pharmaceutical industry, the pharmaceutical lobby is one of the biggest in the in Washington. I There's no way they're going to release that formula. There's no way. I'm predicting right here and now that there's no way that they're going to, because if they really cared about saving the world, we would have teamed up with German scientists, Italian scientists. We all would have, the scientific community would have come together to fight this global thing together. Moderna's uh, stock price. I don't know if you, you did. You catch Moderna's stock price back in March of 2020 before they before they got the contract. Do you no. know what it was? Their stock price back in uh, March of 2020 was 130 dollars a share. Do you want to know where a Moderna's stock price is today? I'm gonna guess four or five thousand. No, three hundred and ninety-five. Oh, uh, is that a, is that a big jump in that world? It's a huge jump. Okay. It's a huge jump. I mean, countries such as South Korea have said, we would love, please let us help to make these vaccines. And they think that they can use their expertise in manufacturing to help the rest of the world. We've asked Washington to transfer technology for vaccine production, but U.S. officials said it was something that should be decided in the private sector. Right. Right. Because they got to decide, they got to determine where they can make the money. It's all about money. This mm-hmm. is this is never from the very beginning been about helping people. Because if it had, they'd have been transparent with how how it was originated, which they didn't. They lied about that. Lied about masks. Lied about everything. Then they lied about herd immunity. They've been lying the entire time, and they wonder why people are so confused. And and yet they're saying like, oh, we want to help the world. That's a that's a load of crap. Because if you did, like I said, these scientists would come together. No private sector would be involved. It would be the scientific community working together to find a solution to a global pandemic. This is global. You want to be a force for good in the United States instead of paying lip service to it? How about here's an opportunity to be a force for good, right? Like stand up to these big Wall Street companies, stand up to these manufacturers and say, you know what? Thank you. We get, we subsidized billions of dollars in this vaccine technology to help get this out on the market quickly, right? Operation Warp Speed, and you're holding this intellectual property. I mean, you have like Seoul, like as I mentioned in the Financial Times, you have like Seoul, South Korea, urging President Biden to break the vaccine IP deadlock. They want to spend billions of dollars in manufacturing because, look, there's a shortage. So we have a shortage. We have an opportunity to help people around the world. We are not living in a vacuum. 
Well, and you know what? And, and how come our our voices are never heard? Because we, okay, we paid these companies, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, and Pfizer. We gave them money yes. to come up with the vaccines. And then they patented it. Are they paying us back with all the trillions they're going to make on the vaccine? Is that coming back to us in any way? No. Oh, you didn't You didn't get your Moderna check yet? No, I haven't. I have not seen one Moderna. I think I might have got a Pfizer. No, that was a... Uh, that was a, a pill, blue pill. But oh, okay. um, but no, like I've gotten nothing from any of them. You got your Viagra. Yeah, you uh, I got that. Yeah, but like, like, look at how much money we probably gave each one of these companies to get these out. So shouldn't if we paid for this, if this is technically our vaccine that we paid for, why can't we decide where it goes? I mean, it's like that just should tell you when you when actions speak louder than words, you should see their agenda is not to help the world. It's not to get rid of the the virus. It is to sell vaccines. Yeah. And by the way, like Pfizer, we talked about here on the show yesterday, paying nothing in taxes and also lobbying to make sure that we don't pass a three point five trillion dollar stimulus package that would maybe raise the corporate tax rate from 21% to 25%, which they'll skirt these laws anyway through loopholes and otherwise. So what do they care? You know, I mean, this is amazing to me that we have the opportunity to help the rest of the world. And they've the pharmaceutical industry has strongly resisted attempts to waive the intellectual property on these vaccines, arguing that this would not boost production given the restraints on supplies of raw materials and that the time it would take to teach other companies how to manufacture the shots. So, oh, you're really concerned about the, the raw materials that we would need. And you're also concerned about their ability to, to learn how to do it. Are they dumb? Right, because we can go in and show people how to build cars, how to make hamburgers. Like We can teach people all of this stuff, but we couldn't teach them a formula to make a, a drug. <sighs> But maybe they're right. I mean, hey, we spent we spent uh, 20 years and two trillion dollars in Afghanistan teaching those people how to hold guns and uh, protect themselves. And uh, within a week, they've collapsed to the Taliban. So maybe they're right. Maybe, by far, you know, maybe the South Koreans are just too dumb to learn how to manufacture things. I got news for you. Asia is where all of our manufacturing goes anyway. Korean companies have already signed deals to manufacture vaccines for AstraZeneca, Novavax, and Russia's Sputnik jabs. Samsung Biologics, one of the world's biggest pharmaceutical contract manufacturers, will this month start the late-stage fill-and-finish vials for Moderna. So, to be clear, South Korea is already manufacturing things for Moderna. <laughs> but, wow, we can't educate them quite fast enough. We can't. We can't. It, clearly, we can't get... Uh, get up to speed on this. Deloitte says Bill Gates' hands are dirty in this too. There's a lot of dirty hands in this, and and it, it just really and it really just blows me away that like if if you were if you were a company right and you had the technology like if I had a company and I had the technology and and I had the data I had the science and something like a global pandemic happened I would do all I could to help people and I would not like I'd be like we got to figure this out I don't care what it costs like I'm, I'll pay for it I'll do whatever I can out of my profits I don't care let's do this we gotta we, we could potentially lose half of this country if we don't get this thing under control so you step up but no what did they do they got the patents first like that's what they cared about first they're like we got to get we got to be the first to get this to market because we got to get these patents out here so that we make the most money during this pandemic and now they're going to see billions in profit off of the money that we gave them to formulate uh, uh, vaccines that they don't even want to share with other people because it's not about stopping the virus. It's about money. And you know they'll sue the federal government too, right? So Moderna would sue. Like if President, So President Biden's hands might be tied on this. And according to the reports, there might have been a secret Trump deal. So listen to this. Alex Azar, the former pharma executive who was Trump's secret Secretary of Health and Human Services, uh, signed away, he, it's possible, that he signed away the government's vaccine rights to Moderna. It's possible, but we don't have access to the unredacted contract. No, it's difficult. for the private sector. It's too, you know, for the private sector. So Alex Azar, under Trump, may have signed away the rights to the vaccine to Moderna under this contract. We don't know. But even if the Trump administration gave away the U.S. government's rights in this vaccine, the government still has another point of leverage, patent rights. 
over a key vaccine component. Because in 2016, a team of researchers working for the U.S. government and Dartmouth College and Scripps Research Institute developed and patented a technology for producing antibodies that neutralize coronavirus spike proteins. So a piece of molecular engineering essential in the development of these vaccines. So we ha- like we own the patent on this, the U.S. does, because of the bird flu that they were studying. So they had already been working on trying to f- figure out a way to stop bird flu. Remember, COVID is a, you know, is a, what is a, deriv- uh, a derivative of, of SARS-CoV-2, right? It's a part of that. So we've already developed a piece of that. So we, we could, if we wanted to, as a point of leverage... If Moderna wants to get in our way, but I, I don't know. Will 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 the White House do anything about this? We'll see. Only if it benefits their uh, their donors, their the the pharmaceutical industry. They'll do whatever favors the rich, not us. Yeah. But you know, look, you know, all of these companies used it. Pfizer, by uh, Johnson and Johnson, and Moderna. They all use this patent that the that we own as United States citizens. So. And, uh, but we'll yet they're going to be the ones that aren't going to share it with uh, the world. All right. No, they need to make money. It's capitalism. So yeah, private sector. They need to make money in this. They got to take. We got to take care of these rich guys on Wall Street. No, I want to talk about Texas now. You guys ready for this? Deep in the heart of Texas. Ooh, I need a deep breath for this story. All right, smoke, smoke. A, here's what you need to do. You need to. Get some weed, smoke a little bit, <laughs> listen to some Pink Floyd, just like in a in a room with just LED lights, just sit there and relax, and then come back and talk about this story. We'll wait. Go ahead. By the way, here's Moderna's uh, here, here's Moderna's new television commercial. Hello, I'm Stacy Hayes. Put down that remote control and get ready to fill your pockets with cash. That's what they do. I think that commercial could work for just about anything, by the way. Pushing the vax. Kristen says, yeah, I'm not pushing the vax. He's just telling us, informing us. I'm not pushing the vax. Like At this point, I think those who've wanted to get vaccinated in the United States have been able to get vaccinated. Um, uh, to me, you notice like the anti-vaxxers, though, those are the people like the anti-vaxxers are also the people that are really in favor of telling women what to do with their bodies. <laughs> like they're on the one hand, they're like, hey, hands off my body. But also women, you don't have any rights. We're going to tell you what to do with your uh, with your genitals here in Texas. So here's uh, if you want to come over to uh, our website, this is morrisinvest.com. Um, and if you're interested in real estate investing, like our minimum down payment for a property is going to be uh, about 40, 40,000. Um, now I know a lot of you will say, oh, that's way too high, but you know, we have financing built in, um, right now. So that's, but we build new construction, our team. Um, so these are the types, you know, we're building duplexes and single families. That's what we build. Um, and so if you're interested, um, and they're already fully what? tenanted with a, with a tenant in place. Don't you have some kind of free thing? I'm trying to find it on here. You have some kind of, um, that's not the grab your freedom cheat sheet, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. So I would encourage all of you to go grab our freedom cheat sheet. It's totally free there. It's on your screen. Okay. And this is really the thing that changed my life. It's once I understood how much in passive income or money I would need every month to live financially free. And so we, I walk you through in the cheat sheet how to do it um, and how to figure this out. If you just go to morrisinvest.com slash freedom, again, not morning invest, go to morrisinvest.com slash freedom. No, not a very creative name, but that is the company I came up with many years ago. So if you come here, you just find, you just put in your email address and we'll download it. You'll download it. It'll be sent to your email and you figure out what your freedom number is. And what I'd like to do, David, you should download it right now and then tell me what you're free, like go through it. It's about three pages. It'll take you a little while to go through your expenses and figure out what that looks like because we teach you what to look for. Then tell me what your freedom number is and we'll talk about it. Like then that's then. And I want you to put that number like up on your refrigerator, up on your monitor and start like, because I have like, we have clients who will, 
they have their they've sent us photos they they will put up their freedom number like one lady had balloons made you know those mylar balloons with the number she had that hung in her office you know how like mylar balloons like never run out of helium like they stay like that for so long so she had she had these mylar balloons made with her freedom number it was like three thousand or like four thousand dollars a month for her to live financially free like if she had passive income coming in every month that could provide that through different investments she wouldn't need to work anymore right and it would take care of all of her expenses i'm talking her groceries her gas her rent etc so she had those made into mylar balloons that hang hung in her home and she was working at it and then she hit that number we were able to help her get to that number um so anyway with you on the road and cutting all these expenses it's going to be an interesting time for you to start reassessing that yeah jim yeah. schultz said i live in my car now i'm in my car in a starbucks parking lot wow but yeah, Jim so says, my goal would be to get some land, do that, and then uh, I would like to pay off. The, like, is it smart to pay off a car and pay off an RV, or is that like, you, you know? Yeah, I mean, those are not those are liabilities, you know. Um, so they're not performing assets, you know. Yeah. Um, let's see here, paranormal post. So here's the website for paranormal posts. If you come to it's youtube.com slash paranormal post. Jim was asking about that. He said, what's the well website, but imagine be having that be your goal, like to hit like that minimum down payment, you know, like 40, $45,000 mm -hmm. down payment. And then you have financing built in the rest and you've got cash flowing properties that are in the best school districts in a certain area that are that, you know, you get the tax benefits of that. Then you add a second, third, third, fourth, fifth property, and you start to build wealth that way. Um, that's what to do. Anyway, here's the paranormal post channel. People are asking about that. So yeah, just uh, youtube.com slash paranormal post. If you're interested in checking that out, uh, we're going to be filming another video today for the channel. The new one that we filmed the other day that just launched is, uh, what, what is at the edge of our solar system? So go check that video out if you're interested. All right, everyone, we've been talking long enough. We had a great show today. Thanks so much for everyone joining us and getting a little uncomfortable with us today. We'll be back tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Peace. Bye, everyone. <laughs>